Wealth at its core is an inner game. Our lived experience, how we get to experience our day-to-day life, whether at its essence we experience life as something that is wealthy and vast and aligned to who we are and what we want. And we get to experience the emotions that we believe will bring us joy and enable us to be fully present with a gracious, extraordinary life can be really supported by embracing and enabling and mastering what I term the five laws of wealth. These are mental constructs, they are principles, they are ways of being that, whether they're the laws of wealth or not, are less important than knowing proven over and over and over when we can live and experience our life from this place, our probability of experience and having the wealthy life we want is significantly, significantly increased. So let's dive into these five laws of wealth. And I encourage you to look at how you can practice these, make them aware and and see if you can make them a part of the way you choose to live your life fully, wealthily, consciously, and take back the reins of agency in your life around this area. So wealth law number one, the law of cause and effect. Now, I believe we each have everything we need to manifest, to create, to experience the most wondrous, wealth-filled life for ourselves. But it all revolves around choice. Freedom of choice, this is at the core and what we choose to focus on, not just into the big picture, but by moment by moment. You see, there are two paths to choose from, the easy path and the difficult path. And what we discover is the difficult path actually is the easy path, the path that when we get it, when we choose it, that initial difficulty leads to a path of flow, alignment, congruency. This is where then serendipity and life gets to support us. And the supposed easy path in the moment, the path that often it's just the path of least resistance, the path of just succumbing to the lowest form of ourselves, actually is the difficult path. So we get to choose the path moment by moment. And in that choice, we create the quality of the life we have, whether it becomes one of frustration and scarcity and difficulty, or one filled with wealth and the life worthy of the precious gift we have. Let's look at the easy road. The easy road or path is a path of no challenge, of no growth. It is one where we're seeking the, the way out of challenge, of resistance. It's the road where for most many people, we can call it the victim path. It's the path where I'm not responsible for the results in my life. All the results I have in my life are because of something outside of myself, outside of us. So we can look at the economy and say, well, you know, my lived experience is a result of what's happening outside of me. The economy, the inflation rate, the interest rates. I can't make money because I can't get a good job. I can't get a great job because of the politicians and corruption. And so we find ourselves in a place where we have no agency. I can't find investments in in you know good property investments in the country I live in because of this or that. So in any time we can actually find evidence to support these things or to refute them. Because in every economy, in every market, in every country, there are people who are making great money, who are finding great investments. But the path where we say, you know, I would have done X, Y, and Z if only I had gone and focused on that program, implemented those things, but this and this got in my way, you know, life's busy, this happened, and, you know, my partner isn't on board, I could have done that, but 
my parents X, Y, and Z, because I was born such and such, I can't. And so we make the cause of our success outside of ourselves. We relate it to how old we are, our sex, our race, our creed, our um, sexual orientation and identification, what our culture is, those around us. And as soon as we do that, we are, we're literally victims and we can't because we are dependent on something outside of us to be different. And this is what this first law of wealth is about. It is the laws of cause and effect. It's all about the reasons we give, the why we can or can't have something in the amount. And the effect is all about the results we get. So the cause is the reasons and the effect is the results. So most people have a life they're not enjoying. Uh, and the reason for that is they're on the wrong side of the cause and effect equation. You know, they say, you know, I'm overweight because I've got a thyroid problem or I've, I'm overweight because of menopause. I'm poor because I came from a poor family. I can't make progress in my investing my wealthy life because of the country I live in and the corrupt politicians, or I can't do this because my partner, my husband, my spouse, my kids aren't supporting me. They're sabotaging me. And so I'm not saying those things aren't true. It's just where we put our agency and the cause of the meaning and the impact we choose to do. So when we choose the easy path, it's a path where we're choosing to live in effect, at effect of the things outside of ourselves. Well, you know, my partner gets all upset and thrown out, and therefore I can't concentrate. So they need to be different in order for me to have a different result. The world needs to be different before I can have a different effect result in my life. And when we choose to view the world and take this position in life, we are giving away our personal power. We're making somebody else responsible for our joy, our wealth, our happiness, for our very results. So therefore, we need the situation outside of us that we've got no control over or no, no impact on to change before we can. So do we see the trap? Most people try to change that event outside of themselves. Most people try to change that event. So they either try and manipulate their partner or circumstance, or they get angry or they collapse on in. And it can be, that's why I say the easy path, the path, it can feel easy, but it's a very difficult path because it gives us excuses. It's easy because it gives us a reason as to why we don't have the level of energy and health and the body that we want because we can use all these reasons that in the moment can feel like a relief. Oh, thank heavens, you know, it's not my fault. But this isn't about fault. It's about agency. Because the challenge is as soon as we make these about things externally from us, I can't invest because, you know, the kids need all the money or I can't be doing this now because we there is no option for us that to be the victim. We are at effect of all of those things. And so that is why in the moment it can feel easier to give the reason as something outside of us. But in the long run, this is the difficult path because there is no change here. And we generally are devastated by this. So in our relationships, in our wealth, in our health, we have to look at where are we choosing to live at effect and instead of being at cause. So let's look at an example. You can say, I am bulimic because I was abused as a child. Now, as humans, we love to attach a reason, a trigger event onto anything we do. And this is why we've got to be very aware of where we put the cause, because that's just how our brain looks. It, it seeks an event. I'm feeling uncomfortable. Gee, what's the result of that? You know, is it my partner? Is it something outside of me? Now, if we go back to the construct of that sentence, I believe it because I was abused as a child, or I cannot have a close and intimate relationship because I was raped when I was young. We're not saying that those experiences weren't true. We're just saying what is the cause and effect 
of what we're linking to it. Because whilst the event might be true, if we put the construct, the meaning that I am bulimic or I can't relate people or I've now got triggers and trauma that prevent me from doing certain things means that I can never escape. It means that until I was no longer raped, until I was no longer abused as a child, I can never escape. And we haven't found a time machine. So it means that we can't go back and change our past, but then we are constantly hooked by it. We are forever victims to that. Now, I certainly don't like the illusion that we create with this construct. So now if we just turn it around, we don't need the event to be different, but how we choose to view it and on which side of the cause and effect equation we choose to be on can completely change our destiny. So listen to this sentence. Because I was abused as a child, I get to... Can you see infinite possibilities come up? We can now be step on and use our past as a stepping stone to the life we want and be part of the foundations of who we are, but not slaves and victims to that past. This is what the difference is of being at cause. So you might say, well, um, I am poor because I came from a poor family. Instead, imagine if we change this because you can't change where you came from. Say, because I grew up with a poor family, I now have an infinite number of choices. There's a different set of meanings, different set of paths we can have. Because I came from a poor family, I choose to change my intergenerational patterns of dysfunction around money. Because I come from a poor family, I'm focused and committed to really mastering my money stuff, getting value from it and changing that for my children's future. I can choose to break those cycles. I can choose to give a new meaning to where I came from. Because I grew up poor, I really appreciate the value of every rand, dollar, be pound in my life and I give great leadership and direction to my money. I now choose what to do with it to change that destiny for myself. Can you see the power of being at cause? This isn't about saying the things that happened to us didn't have really big impacts emotionally, they were in difficult situations, but we get to choose how they define our future. And this is what being a cause is. It's a model that can really work, can shift the progress. So when you look at any area in your life, in your relationships, in your wealth, in your health, uh, in your work, notice is there something going on where you are being at effect? where you are collapsing in and believing that you have no agency on something outside of yourself. There's a lovely phrase that one of my coaches that I have, that I work with says, the world has no thing for me. My partner has no thing for me. My business has no thing for me. What that means is there is nothing outside of me that I need for me to be okay. So when we can come to the point, so it doesn't matter what's happened in my past, what's happening in my current situation, it doesn't define who I am. I need, I now get to choose what those meanings have. You know, my partner is really bad with money, so I get to choose what I'm going to do about that. Not, oh, well, there's nothing I can do because my partner is. So when we take the effect and put that at the front and then we go, well, what am I going to do about that? What's my power? You can really see how in using this model, using this tool, this law can change ownership of your destiny. So try and control what is happening in a different way. We get to give the meaning to our past. We get to give the meaning to the things outside of us and we get to choose how we're going to respond to that. And in doing so, we get to define and change our, our life. Having this internal agency is one of the greatest gifts we can give ourselves. So it determines the impact we have, our power, our freedom, and mostly it brings us back the joy of knowing, wow, we truly are the ones that create our amazing life. You know, a lot of people talk about manifesting as those changing the external circumstances. What if it was changing the way you viewed the world.
And from that, the options and therefore the results, the actions you take and therefore the results you get. So we also then know if we choose to stay in effect, if we choose to stay being the victim to our external circumstances, how many options do we have? Absolutely none. The options shut down and all we can do is be miserable, disempowered victims, blaming the rest of the world around us for the results we have. Or we can consciously choose to go, okay, what barrier am I believing is in the way? How do I be at cause around this? We don't need to change the situation, but we can change the meaning it gives. Now, how many options do you have? Infinite choice. Now, living at cause isn't always comfortable, but it really is a powerful place to be. It's a place of personal power. It's the wealthiest place to be because now we have choice. Now we have freedom. Now we have agency, and not only can we choose our options we have around this and the meaning we give, and we're going to get to wealth law number three on meaning, we now go, oh, we are no longer trapped. We truly are free because we get to choose our destiny. And so this is often the difficult path that many people think it's hard to take effect, and many people will, will get angry with you when you're saying, Great, none of those things need to prevent you because we are a culture that loves to be aggrieved, avenged. Other things need to change outside of us. But the devastating thing is we then are constantly without any agency. So when you can find a way to consciously choose to come back into cause, this is how you get to change the story of your life where you step into freedom and you know that that agency is back with you. So look at all the big causes you have as to why you're not living the life that you really want, why you're not getting to experience the love, the joy, the, that sense of wealth around you and see how you can flip it around to be the very reason why you absolutely will and must now create and live the life that you want to be living.